Welcome everybody, it's great to uh, be with you again today. What an amazing day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice, we're going to be glad in it. It's an exciting time that we're living in and uh, I am so happy to be with you today and I'm glad that you've tuned in with us. Uh, I'd like to continue today on uh, what I was doing last week, a spirit life. Uh, if you missed last week, you can still find that uh, message on our website, uh, gcchurch.com.au. It will also be on uh, YouTube and also on Facebook. So uh, if you wanted to listen to that and so you can catch up with what I'm saying, because I'm not going to repeat everything, obviously, but I will refer to some things that I spoke last week. Father, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the victory of the cross of Calvary. We thank you for the life of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors. We thank you, my God, that uh, you are just watching over your people. You're watching over your church. You're watching over your word to perform it. Lord, you've spoken your word and it will come to pass. Everything that you've ever said, everything that you've ever dreamed, everything that you've ever purposed for the church will come to pass. And my God, we just want to just have an ear today to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We want to, we want to just flow in you. Lord, I pray today that you would uh, help us find the truth because it's only the truth that will make us free. And for that, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Well, my name is Neil Myers. I'm from Global Connections uh, Church at Kiwana Waters. Uh, we've got Greg and Joanne. They're still in lockdown in America somewhere. But we're believing for them to come uh, back very, very soon. So I really, really appreciate your prayers in that. If you could just keep praying for them that uh, God would uh, make a way for them. And uh, because we serve a miracle working God, don't we, that can do uh, more than we could ever imagine or think. And that uh, we're just believing for God to open up a door for them to come back. Amen. Uh, so I'm going to share again at the Spirit Life 2 today. And uh, you see, if we understand some things about this natural man, if we start to understand things about this human body, and uh, it was fallen, it was, you know, we know about the great fall and a lot of stuff got inside us and a lot of wrong things and we were led by the flesh. And, and then, I don't know about you, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't born up in a Christian home. I, I got saved when I was 27. So there's a lot of things that were established in my, my natural man, things that, that I'd been taught through the natural, you know, you know wrong things, things that, uh, that I'm you know, trying to deal with. And so when I got born again, uh, it was a whole new way of living. It was a whole new way of thinking. It was a whole, whole new concept that, uh, that touched my life. And, and so there was a lot of changes that had to take place. So if we're going to understand that there's a war that is raging inside of every human, particularly those like myself that might have got saved later in life, because there's things that I learned in the natural that are contrary to the things of the spirit. So when the, when the things of the spirit come, the natural man says, no, that's not right. That's, that's not the way you do it. And so there's a war that's raging inside every human. You see, you speak to yourself more than anybody else ever speaks to you. More than anything else. And, and you speak to yourself through thoughts. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes, uh, you know, we uh, men can go into our empty box, <laughs> as they say, uh, that women don't have and they don't understand it. But we just sit in there and we just think. And, and they come up to you and they say, what are you doing? They say, nothing. <laughs> nothing. We're just thinking. We're just, uh, yeah, but they, uh, they, they don't understand that. And, and if we don't understand, if we don't understand well, this conflict that goes on, it, 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 will, it will cause us all kinds of trouble. Uh, so we, 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 we talk to ourselves through thoughts, through imaginations, through dreams, uh, fears, fears of failure. But then there's another concept that comes in. It's called faith in God, faith in the Word, faith in what God says. You see, the way of the flesh... We can either live in the way of the flesh or we live in the way of the spirit. 
It's who you're controlled by that will determine your future. Romans 12 verse 1 uh, says this. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that, you're pres that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, I was conformed by the world for 27 years. That's how I lived. That's how, how I felt, and that's what, all I had to work with. Now a whole new set of rules and laws and different things come into my life. And so it says, don't be conformed. Don't be, don't be just locked into that, but be transformed. And Father, I pray today that we, every one of us, and my, myself included, I need to even go further and deeper to be more transformed uh, to what your word says and what, what you want to do in our lives. I beseech you, I urge you, I, I, I want to be able to help you. It also says in uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, and, and uh, these are just scriptures that I want to just share a little bit with you. It says, in verse 16, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet there's an inward man that's being renewed day by day. See, th those words are strange to the unsaved mind. All of a sudden, there was Neil, and now all of a sudden, there's two of them. <laughs> there's an inward man, and there's an outward man. The outward man is perishing. There's an inward man that's being renewed day by day. And the things of life, it goes on to say there, it says, for our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, that to the unborn mind is so crazy. It is so, so far from the way you think. And an unsaved person listening to that, they think, what, is, what have they been on? What, they, they're talking about things that are not seen are more real than the things that are seen. How, how silly is that? But you see, that is the spirit life. That is the thing that we've got to understand that, that there's just there's a conflict going on there. That when you got born again, something on the inside came alive that was laying dormant, that was perhaps dead you know, whatever doctrine you have, whatever theory you have, whatever your thought you have, but nevertheless, there is an inward man and an outward man. The Bible doesn't lie to us. It's not there just to, to bring confusion to us. So there's an outward man and an inward man. One is perishing and one is being renewed. If you receive the new birth, it gets renewed. The out man, outside man will try to control the inward man. Man, I, I know it's easy, like, you know, you, you come to church and you, you come under the anointing and under the presence of God and you're shakabundi and then you're loving God and, and there and, and the Spirit of God starts speaking to you about fasting. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. You know, the, the preacher might even preach on fasting and, oh, who's going to fast this week? And you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to fast. I'll do that. I'll do that. And so you go home and, and you know, and, and all of a sudden you smell the roast cooking and you smell this and... And that, that thought of fasting, all of a sudden there's a conflict. And, and um, you know, I, I even heard a man once that, that was fasting and, and uh, he, uh, he was really, really hungry and he saw a bunch of bananas that were hanging up in the garage and he thought, man, if I, did, I could just take one of them and nobody would know. You see, that's the flesh man talking to you, the flesh man trying to talk you out of doing what God has put onto your heart. There's a conflict, there's a war that's going on. And I just want to read again, if I can, Romans uh, uh, chapter 12 there, and uh, just that verse 1. Let me just find it again. Um, and let's read it again. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And that, that, 
That's the language of the Spirit. Lord, I, I want to I, I I yield my flesh man. I, I want to give it up. I, I don't want to be led by the flesh. I don't want to be controlled by the flesh. I don't want anger and all that stuff raging and jealousy and pride and all those things that, that the flesh contains. I don't want them making decisions for my life. I want the Spirit of God to make decisions for my life. And, I, and I'm asking you to do that, Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We all want the perfect will of God in our lives, don't we? That, that outward man will try to control you as sure as anything. It will try to tell you what to do. The inward man must be led by the Spirit of God. The inward man must be able to control our lives. The Word of God must be able to be more, uh, more controlling in our lives than anything else. Whatever God says, do it. Romans, you know, it's an amazing thing. You have, you have, and I have, a major part to play in my future. We renew our minds by the Word of God. We yield or give away to the Spirit of God. We let God come in. The Bible says in Hebrews, let's have a quick look at Hebrews. I hope you don't mind me reading the Bible today. It's not a bad book. It's, it's very, very real. It's very, very true. And uh, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 4, and I'm going to read from uh, verse uh, 12. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. What an amazing, what an amazing thing. See, this book, this book is living. It's alive. We know that the letter can kill, but it's the Spirit that brings life. And if you read this book with the Spirit of God and ask God to help you and, and understand that when God starts speaking to you about things like that, that are, you know, unseen things are more real than the seen things and stuff like that. Instead of allowing your natural man, the natural man, the flesh man, to start saying that is so stupid, you'd have to be stupid to believe something like that. How, how ridiculous. But if we say, God, I want you to reveal it to me by your spirit. Let your spirit speak to me. And we start to understand the things of the spirit. Spirit life is the most important part of your life. You have more to do with your destiny than you would ever, ever imagine. It's who you come into agreement with. Whether you come into agreement with your flesh man that says that's stupid, or whether you hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. Romans is a very, very real book. The Word of God is living. It is powerful. We renew our minds by the Word of God. I don't know about you, but I'm putting up my hand. I need my mind renewed. Almost daily. Almost every hour. Because there's things there that get into your mind. And this, you know, I don't know about you, but there are things there that, you know, that you think, that come up, that things that have happened to you or things that, that your flesh man wants to bring up. And, and you think, where did that come from? I, I, I forgot all about that, but all of a sudden he brings it up to you. Don't you go there. Don't you trust that person. Remember you did that before. Remember this and all that sort of stuff. You think, where did that come from? You see, it's the enemy there trying to bring stuff up. But you see, if we can somehow or other be yielding to the Spirit of God and let the Spirit of God, because this word is alive, it's living, it's real. He wants to renew my mind by the Word of God. This word contains life. You see, this is it. In, 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 in Christianity, we can paraphrase things. We can, we can speak things out. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. 
or else you can say, man, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. It's not, I'm a child of God. So I should be, no, no. I'm a child of God. I, I'm a child of God. God loves me. See, we, we, we can say words or else we can say words. <laughs> words are very, very important. And you can say things. You, you, you know, I'm washed in the blood. We, we say all these things, but, you know, all of a sudden, I'm washed in the blood. I'm being washed. I'm cleansed. I'm no longer the old man. I'm no longer that fellow that, that got at, 20, at 27 that was living that life. The prodigal could have said, I'm no longer that, that one that was living in the pig pen. I'm no longer that one. Now I'm a child of God. Now I'm washed in the blood. Now, now I've been cleansed. Now I've been made whole. I've been changed. I've been transformed. You see, you, you've got to meditate on the words. To just say it's not enough. I've been washed. I'm a child of God. And so you sit there in your, in your empty room. You sit there and you start to just meditate on that. You start to think, man, I didn't deserve it, but, but God, somehow or other, you, 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 your mercy reached down and touched me. and You pulled me out of the miry clay. You pulled me out of self-destruction and, and you, put, you breathe your life into me and you touch me and now you call me a joint heir with you and, and, and you call me son. I'm I'm a child of God. God, you love me, and you just start to th and you let that wash over you. You let that touch you. The devil says, "Yeah, but you were this. Now, yeah, that's what I used to be. I'm not listening to what you say about me. I'm listening to what God says. I'm meditating on what God says. I'm washed in the blood. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm I'm no longer a slave to the devil. You see." Most Christians, and I have to put my other hand up this time to, to say that I've always, you know, used the excuse the devil made me do it. Not necessarily so. It's your flesh that really makes you react. It's your flesh that will make you react. I am a child of God. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Paul said these things. He said, the things that I do, I don't do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. Romans 7, 22, it says, For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. He's saying, this, this spirit part of me, the, this new part of me, delights in the law of God. This new creation man. But then he said, I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. You see, this flesh man will try to bring you into captivity to fleshly thinking. Wrong thinking. Paul also cried out, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? O wretched man, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. See, we've got to meditate on the word of God. But a lot of times, and I've got to put both hands up this time, I've been guilty of allowing the enemy to infiltrate my mind and get me thinking wrong thoughts. Because you see, there's not one of us here that's listening today, and me included, that haven't been hurt. We've been hurt in church. We've been hurt, misunderstood, misrepresented, all those sort of things. And, and, and so, you know, your mind is still carries that. And the enemy wants to bring that to the surface and wants to bring you into condemnation and wants to bring anger into your heart and instead of forgiveness and, 
And, and, he, and, and I, I believe that Paul just described it so well. He said, I delight in the law of God. I, friend, there's not one of us that get up in the morning and say, I'm just going to see if I can make God mad today. <laughs> I'm just going to see if I can do something wrong today that's going to make God mad. No, we don't. Because you see, we love Jesus. We love God. But then in your daily walk, all of a sudden, something will stir up. And you think, where did that come from? Where, where did that anger come from? Where, where did that memory come from? You see, there's another law that's warring in your body. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Warring again, bringing me into captivity. See, if he can get me angry and get me like that and cursing and carrying on and getting, you know, I, I, I get all condemned then and broken. And There are many people today that are, it just got so confused that they're, they're backslidden and they've gone away from God. You see, Paul had an antidote for that. And I spoke it last week in Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, get that, he wasn't trying to say now all of a sudden I'm some holy, holy, super spiritual person. No, I'm born again. I've got the kingdom of God, the life of the Spirit inside me, but I'm still living in the flesh. I've still got this fleshly house that I'm living in. No longer I live with Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <laughs> you see, we need the power of God to, live, to deliver us from the flesh nature. The flesh nature that's inside. Look, friend, I, I, I don't have to convince you. You already know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying is real. That holds us captive. But you see, the Bible says in, in Acts 1.8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. It's not just power to be near. No, it's power to overcome the onslaught of the flesh, the onslaught of the enemy, as so as that we can become a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you believe that today? What he was confessing was the outward man, the flesh man, was crucified with Christ. The flesh man was crucified with Christ. Though Paul still lived in the flesh, he didn't allow the flesh to control him. The flesh will never fill or satisfy the void that's in man's heart. You can, you know, for a little while you might be satisfied <laughs> if you get a little bit of vengeance or something like that, and then after a little while then you start to feel... Miserable. John 6 verse 63 says this. It is a spirit who gives life. Friend, we need spirit life flowing through our being. We need revelation of this word. We need God to illuminate, to reveal the mysteries, the hidden truths that are in here. It is a spirit who gives life. The flesh will bring death. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. This is Jesus speaking. He goes on to say, but there are some of you who do not believe. Here are people in the presence of Almighty Jesus, the Son of God. And He was speaking to them, but the words that he was speaking, they did not understand. There was confusion in their minds, and because of that, they could not grasp. They could not believe. There's a lot of people in, in church today that, that they let stuff just go over their head, that they don't understand it. No, we've got to seek it out. We've got to find it. I believe it's every believer's birthright to be led by the Spirit of God. It is my birthright. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. 
The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in it. He delights in it. It's every believer's birthright to be led by the Spirit. It's your birthright to hear God's voice. Unfortunately, we've, we've heard the, 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 the people there that God's always telling them something. God's always speaking and always... And, and so you look at their life and you don't see the fruit. But they're all God's... And you think, man... No, but it's your birthright to hear from God. It's your birthright. It's what... To hear God's voice. It, it's your birthright to move in the supernatural power of God. To live in victory. You see, confession brings possession. Confession will bring possession. Confusion as to who you are in Christ will produce failure and lack. Denial produces failure and lack. But confession brings life. I, I, want, to, I want to be able to confess who I am in Christ. You know, Mark 16, uh, 17 and 18... Let's just have a quick look at that if, for a moment. And this is what God, I believe, for every believer, every person that's ever, ever accepted Christ, this is what He wants to do in our life. It says in verse 16, it says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. You see, these, from what I can read here, were the last words that Jesus spoke to his church. So he wasn't just going to say, boy, don't worry about anything. No, these words were very, very important. They were words that he wanted us to hear. These signs will follow those that believe. In my name. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. That's what God wants us to do. It's the Spirit who gives life. It's God's amazing spirit that, that will touch us again. These signs and wonders are not just for some select group, not just for some special people, but for every believer. Don't just be a church goer. A lot of people just go to church. Just don't be a church goer, but be God's representative on planet Earth. Signs and wonders and miracles and victory and everything that God has won for you, everything that God wants for you, let it flow through you. Let us be a, a witness to everybody as the power of God is demonstrated in our life. Move in the power of God. Move in the gifts. What we all need is an encounter with a living God. Paul was a churchgoer. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1, and I won't read it all to you today because uh, of time, but just read it there and you, you find a story about Paul. His mission as a church goer was to round up and put in prison all the radical, spirit-filled Christians who claimed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Messiah. But we all know God intervened. On the road to Damascus, he met a saviour of the world. As a church goer, have you met the saviour of the world? Have you allowed him to come into your life? Have you met the Jesus of the Bible or the Jesus of religion? See, Paul was a church goer, as we would say it. He, he went to the synagogue. He, he tried to serve God. We know, we've heard of his pedigree. Circumcised on the eighth day and a Pharisee and a this and a that and all that. He, he, was, he was what you'd call a good, a good Jewish boy. Churchgoer, 
highly respected, had a had position. But he didn't know, he didn't realize, he didn't really have an understanding. His mission was contrary to what God wanted. But God met with him. Just don't be a church goer. <laughs> Let the Spirit of God get inside you and reveal who you really are. Meet the Christ. You see, this encounter changed his life forever. You, can, you and I can have an experience with the living God that will change our lives forever. I have to put my hand up again. Totally changed, totally transformed. Total, one direction into another direction. Totally just the Spirit of God. And over the years, as, even as a young Christian, God started to speak to me through the Bible and started to reveal things to me and, and started to share stuff with me and, and help me and and, and then through prophetic utterances and things like that, that God started to talk about things that were on the inside of me that I didn't understand. Prophets would come and start to share, and God's going to do this with you, and God's going to... And I used to think, man, how stupid is that person? Don't they know who... They, who do they think I am? But you see, God knows, and, and He reveals this tough stuff to us through His Spirit. And it wasn't then until God started to move that you started, oh man. And then you, you see, oh, that's what, that's what God was saying back there. And, and, and He's always with us. He's always leading us. He's always guiding us. You can have an encounter. You can experience a living God that will change your life forever. See, I would, I would be, it would be stupid of me. And please give me a little bit more credit to tell you these things, if they were not true, if, 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 if what I'm saying is just rubbish and I'm trying to con you, how long would it take for people to realize that I was a con? But you see, in Psalms 34 verse 8, this is what it says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. <laughs> Let me just read it again. This is God speaking to us. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in Him. You see, it's the same with the Lord. Why would He tell you to taste and see if there was nothing to taste and see? <laughs> you see, I, I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord is good. The Lord is true. He is honest and real. There's a fruit that you find over in, um, oh, where is it? Singapore and places like that. It's called durian. Many are put off by the smell and never ever taste the delicious fruit. I love durian. <laughs> Nancy thinks it smells and tastes like old Sanchez. Now, I don't know whether she ever ate one of those or not, but that's what she thinks it tastes like anyhow. People smell the smell and they ah! But, oh, man, it is the most delicious fruit that I, I believe that you could ever eat. They say it's the fruit of kings and the king of fruits. But, you see... You may be put off from giving your life to the Lord because of something that's happened. A bad experience, perhaps. You might have been ripped off by somebody claiming to be a Christian. <laughs> I'm laughing, but man, I think we've all had that one. <laughs> There's things that have happened to us and there's not one of us here, most probably, that haven't been hurt or disappointed or told that we were past our use-by date. We are told things and people spoke about us and spoke negatively and you feel let down and you, and you get broken and disappointed. You see things in the church that, that should never happen, but that's unfortunate because when we realize that 
people in the spirit are still in this natural body, and this natural body is still trying desperately to control people and hurt people. Some people have once served God, but because of hurts, caused the fire to go out. I've had a word of God just recently, and said, told me that the prodigals and the sons, many of the sons that we raised up are going to return. You may be one of those prodigals. You may be one of those sons and the fire's gone out. Pray you'd let the Spirit of God get around your life and breathe on the coals. Let it burst into flame again because you've got a destiny and you've got a purpose. God's got a plan for your life. I pray today that you would allow the wind of the Spirit and Spirit life to get inside you again. Cause you to rise up. Friend, I want to tell you it's got no, nothing to do with how old you are. It's very obvious as you look at this video today that there is an outward man that you're looking at that is perishing. <laughs> things have fallen out and out of place and a few things are missing. But I want to tell you, friends, as an inward man, and that inward man is being renewed. And that inward man is as alive today as it ever was. That inward man is, is just as hungry and passionate for a move of God's Spirit that has ever been. I long and I linger and I, and I linger in His presence to allow that anointing to come again like a mighty rushing wind that would flood over us. I pray the wind of the Spirit would, would just surge around your life today and cause you to rise Rise above the circumstances and the hurts. Let the spirit man begin to speak inside you again. Go and gather some of those prophetic words that you've had over the years and let them speak to you again. Because you see, those words carry life. Grab hold of the book. Grab hold of this book. Grab hold of this mighty, mighty book and start to read it again and let it speak to you and let it show you and let it reveal to you what God says about you, what God thinks about you. I don't care what man thinks about me. I don't care if they laugh at me. I don't care if they jeer at me. I don't care. It's got nothing to do with that. But what I care about today is that God Almighty is looking down upon this old frail body. This frail body, but I want to tell you, he's looking at the spirit man. The spirit of Caleb, the spirit of Joshua, the spirit of a young man that is, is rising up on the inside. That's going to go out and conquer and destroy and defeat. And going to raise up a great army again. I pray the Spirit of God would get around us. I pray Jesus would be able to get inside us again. Spirit life, come, come spirit life and touch us again. You know, today you might be here and, and you don't really know Christ. Or perhaps you're backslidden. Perhaps you're, you're not sure whether Jesus is real or not. Friend, I cannot convince you. I can't convince you. My words, I, I, I would plead with you. I would encourage you. I would do everything I can to, to ask you to make the decision. But only the Spirit of a living God can reveal Christ to you, can reveal that, that which you really need. I can point you in the direction. I can perhaps show you a little bit. But only the Spirit of God, Spirit life, that can really reveal the Christ. Really reveal your purpose. So today I'm asking you, would you give your life to Christ? If you're, if you're one of those uh, prodigals or, or, or sons or whatever it is and you've drifted away, come back. Come back to Christ. Let, it, let Him be your Lord. Don't come back to me. Don't come back to me. Come back to Jesus and let Him lead you and guide you. So Father, today I'm praying for, for people that that are either coming back or making that decision again to serve you or for you to come into their life. Father, would you touch them? Just ask, you know, just say, Jesus, come into my life. Come again, Lord Jesus, breathe on me again. Jesus, would you save me? Would you deliver me? Would you set me free from this body of death? Would you help me, my God, to find you? He will help you. And Father, we're praying today for different ones that really need that touch of healing in their body. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your healer. 
He is your deliverer. I just sense right now that there's a person there and you're, you're having trouble with drugs. You're, you're just having trouble and, and, and you're saying, oh, you know, I can't get this. I want to tell you, if you let Jesus come in and help you, he will be your strength. He will be your deliverer. He will deliver you from that thing. He will deliver you from that cursed thing. There's somebody else here right now and you're listening to me and you've got a condition that's in your neck and you're getting pains in, the, in this, this side of your neck and it goes right up into your head. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking you to touch that person. Touch them now. There's others there that have got chronic stomach conditions. Chronic stomach conditions. Father, touch those ones right now. Heal them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glorify your son, Father, by stretching forth your hand to heal those that are reaching out to you today for their healing. And Father, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. There's somebody else, just as I was closing then, and you're suffering with, with headaches. Headaches, headaches, headaches. They plague your life. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, release it. I believe that's from a, an injury you've had in your neck, an injury that, that happened to you a long time ago, and you've suffered for many, many years. I'm asking Jesus right now to heal your neck, to put those bones back into place and set you free in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we will give you all the praise. We will give you all the glory. Amen and amen. Well, thank you guys and girls for joining in today. And um, I pray that uh, you've been able to get something out of this. Um, and anyhow, uh, we're just praying for uh, Greg and Joanne to come back very, very quickly. Please continue to pray for them. And um, let's see what God does. And be blessed. Have an amazing week. Have an amazing week. Don't forget to catch the broadcast at 10 o'clock on uh, Sunday morning, uh, PBN. We thank God for TBN. They are so good people. They have been so good to us. And uh, we really, really appreciate them. So God bless you today. Have a great day. Amen.